one of the four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've known Ben for quite a long time. He's joining us from New Zealand today, and he's going to show us some of the things that he's using AI and automation for. Um, and Ben is a trainer, facilitator, um, serial entrepreneur, experimenter. He's technically savvy and also has a marketing flavor, I would say. Um <laughs> Did I get that right, Ben? Well, I've been taking products to market for 30 years. So yeah, I guess I got a marketing flavor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me just zoom out. Too many screens these days. But um, like, okay, who we got here? I, I'd be really interested. So um, team, as as Nicole said, I've known Nicole for um, I don't know, I've been in EO 20 odd years and I used to have a, a Canadian business. I bounced around uh, Canada a bit. And, and so and we got some cool mutual friends. I also had a San Francisco business and we had a close friend there. Um, and um, I've been watching, um, you know, I kind of dropped out of the business world for a few years and started to get back into it just as GPT sort of dropped. And I was like, okay, wow, everything just changed. And and my skill set's mainly, it's not in detail, yeah? Uh, it's, in, it's in big picture and, and seeing really wide. That's kind of my gift. And so I look at like already what's dropped and, and even with what's not coming. And I, I think it's going to be like, if we stop developing today, it would take us 10 years to catch up easily with, with the implications for the business world. And, and there's not any aspect of any business that won't be touched. So, so, you know, as entrepreneurs, you know, there's two types of change we go through. Yeah? There, there's cyclical change and there's structural change. And structural change is when the big opportunities happen and the big money, you know, uh, changes hands, yeah, because um, it's never going back. And so right now we're in the biggest structural change that's ever been. Uh, and I say that because, yeah, like there were things that changed the world a lot, electricity and all that, but they did it really slowly compared to the speed of the distribution channels we have now through, you know, the, the internet. And so, yeah, like we're in we're in a in a place where it doesn't matter where you look across what you're doing, um, it's going to get impacted. And I guess marketing being at the top of the funnel, it, it gets hit first, yeah, because because there's no point automating the shit out of the rest of your business if if you're not growing the the leads, you know. <laughs> and so, so we're in an amazing place. And so, um, how I've been looking at it is I've been sort of um stepping back thinking really high level like what does a business need to do every business needs to do four things it doesn't matter what industry you're in generate a lead convert a lead deliver a product or service and get paid and so generate a lead and convert a lead i think uh gonna become almost fully automated and and i think the whole inbound and content marketing is going to completely change over this next year and um, you know, when I look at some of the technologies coming online and, and I don't know which technologies you've shared, I think you're across more of them than me, Nicole. Um, but, I, you know, I'll apply them to kind of the industries I know and, and where I see they're going to have a huge impact and, and change the thing. And I guess where, where I start right at the top of the funnel is like, how do you meet people? Yeah. And, and the old inbound model of sending a whole lot of content out to everyone and then hoping some of them like it and, and come back, I, I think that's going to die pretty quickly. Uh, I just think it's too inefficient. A and we're going to go to a much, much more targeted approach. And so, um, I don't know, have you been looking at technologies like Mention or these these scraping technologies that allow you to join conversations? Because um, that's kind of a place I could start. I think they're amazing. No, I think, I think that would be a great place to start because we wanted to kind of cover the sales from, you know, getting leads, scraping leads, identifying them, getting them into CRM. And, but, well, we can talk about what we're doing in um, Go High Level and kind of how we're looking at that process. But it does start with that beginning conversation and getting people in. And there's places where the bots can take over and CRM can take over. So I'm curious. So please do show us. Okay, um, and what I might do just to start with, oh, sorry, my just managing my 3,000 screens here, so you're all uh, <laughs> close, but I can still see, ah, uh, yeah, you come back here. No, keep going for this one. Sorry. We're getting there, team. Like, AI caused my office to change, and this year I'm going to go 
completely change it again. I'm going to go fully um, away from keyboards and go to voice and screen so I can talk to my AIs and they're putting stuff up on the screens for me. So I've been testing that out. And um, yeah, so I need a new office now. I have all this beautiful light and sunlight and, you know, the ocean. And it's like, yeah, but I've got nowhere to put any screens. <laughs> it's no good. So, <laughs> How yeah. many screens do you have now? I'm just running four, but um, like, <laughs> yeah, it's not enough. Um, especially when you've got these guys working for you. It's not like you need, you, you just need to watch them. You've got them out there doing shit. It's, it's pretty amazing. I also, just so you know, like I dropped everything about mid-December. I went so deep with AI last year. Like I, I, I started programming at the start of last year and I deployed three commercial projects by the end of the year. It was crazy um, with AI. I, I mean, and I was like, I burnt myself out. So I just dropped tools for six weeks and went burning um and so i'm just getting back into it so the latest developments i'm not fully across but what i'd say is um one of the things i've been looking at is um and this may not make a lot of sense but i, I guess the thinking around why ai is changing everything so i've got one um product i'll see if i can share a screen here uh which one yeah, have a look at this one so i got one product that um is a SaaS tool and let me find some stuff um so here was a, like a, a workflow yeah, to, to get someone up and running in our SaaS tool, you know, pre all this technology, yeah? And we were getting, you know, it's a viral place. So we've got really good metrics of people wanting it, but not enough people getting through this flow. And so when we looked at what's the availability now, here's what's crazy. I can actually, uh, if you look here, I can actually bring people immediately using these scraping texts I'm about to show you. Oh, ignore that. Maybe that shouldn't be on the video, but like that's an internal name for the project. Um, <laughs> the meeting. Okay, that's not, it's not commercial. So yeah, um, but but it's like, man, everyone we set up loves our technology. No one can set it ourselves. We've got to unfuck that. So that's how it came about. And, um, and so, but what's amazing, like, you know, I used to have to go out, think about this, I have to go out and send all this inbound stuff. Hey, look at us, look at us, look at us. And someone would come along and they'll go, oh, who are they? What do they do? Uh, how, you know, what should we show them? Yeah. And so you've got all this information to get to get them to the right thing. Yeah. And so, so that's, that's, that's a lot of work and a lot of opportunities to lose them. And so um, one of the, the technologies I've been looking at a few different brands with, but I, I've got one here I did a demo with is the scraping technology. So, um, that particular project's uh, a, a meeting um, uh, a meeting technology. Yeah? So it's uh, basically an execution framework that drives re high performing recurring meetings uh, across companies, connecting data and people and tasks and all that. And so it's like an upgrade on a, uh, if you guys are familiar with the level 10 meeting that EOS do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I set this technology up. And I just tell it to look for anyone talking about level 10 meetings anywhere. And so I know all these people have been talking about level 10 meetings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can have it, I can send it to LinkedIn. I can send it to X. I can send it wherever I like. Yeah. And I just did a little trial and yeah, like I got, uh, I don't know. Yeah. 3000, you know, like in a couple of weeks. So I could filter it deeper and, and, and narrow that amount, like make them even more qualified, but, but they're talking about this. Now, here's what's amazing. So I already know a lot about these guys. Now, if I was doing a high, a big ticket sale, I could then have the next scraping bot go out and research each of these individuals and find out all about their company. Yeah. Now, so, so there's two steps that could happen here. So, so we've already got information about people who are interested. But what we can do now is we can have a bot. Or, so how I did it is for me... I'll go and join a meeting, uh, a chat where someone's talking about level 10 meetings. And I'll go, oh yeah, we love level 10 meetings. We do this and that. And they'll go blah, blah, blah. And then I'll send them, I'll say, oh, check this out. We connected it up with all this data and we'll send them a link to the unfuck out with the, a pre-populated meeting, yeah, that is a level 10 meeting that they'll completely understand. Because with our product, like hard to get, but as soon as you see it, people go, oh, I need it. And so we can literally know that they're already running level 10s they're asking people like how to improve them yeah and, and then send them to the ultimate version of that like compare that to the old inbound yeah like it's it's just a different animal so it's, we're basically starting the conversation 
qualified, interested, <laughs> have, a, have a problem right now, have chatted to them and sent them to a solution. But if we were doing a bigger ticket sale, like for my consulting business, I could then have, um, you know, a scraper like a GPT. I could set the GPT up to do this or any other. Uh, I'm sure um, uh, Nicole's got much more sophisticated ways of doing it. You know, go out and research that that person I'd identified and then give that research to a uh, GPT that would write uh, a script or a, you know, a proposal. Hey, here's how our solution would work with your business, Bob, because we know all about your business. We had a look at it because we saw you were talking about it. We thought it could be a good fit. And then I'd give that to HeyGen. And I get HeyGen to make a video of me talking to Bob about his business with a presentation of how our two businesses could work together and drop it in his LinkedIn or whatever it might be. So, you know, I've set my avatar up. I'm just playing with this now. It's not in the market. We'll all make it a lot better. We just jumped it on our deck, but our business model is all about friggin' works. It's crazy. I hated going to sit in front of the camera. Now I can do it like once every few months. I'm okay with that. And so all our training videos, all our stuff, People get to see to my face, so when they come to my webinars, they we know me, I build my brand, blah, blah, blah. So, so already, like from a sales and marketing perspective, I, I've I've got the m dramatically more qualified person than I ever had before. Yeah, I know it's not only they have some interest, they're literally talking about this now. I've got all their information without having to have them bother. I haven't even talked to them at this stage if I don't want to. Yeah, and I can share them a link and a solution that's ideal for them so so the key here and and and, and something um that um, nicole just spoke to and i'm looking at a range of technologies is like all these technologies exist and more there's extraordinary individual tools and it's how do you connect them all up yeah and yeah. so it's that building that hub and spoke model that has the you know um the 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 crm in the middle that triggers and moves the information around and and, you know, a lot of the CRMs that have been around for a while weren't purpose built for this. And so they can do it in some parts of the flow and not in others. So you're going to see a new generation of these come out that is, is specifically designed to, to link all this stuff up. That, that's kind of what I see next. Um, Nicole, I'll be really interested in your thoughts on all, how that how that's going to play out too. Is that another one there? Was well, there? I'm wondering right now if anybody has questions yeah. about this first part. Yeah, you got to stop me. I can talk all day. This is another one. Yeah, and I know you can answer questions too. So I was wondering, Mackenzie, if you've got any questions. I feel like I came into the middle of the conversation. So it took me a second to understand what we were looking at, to be honest. But now I'm exploring uh, the website. What is it? MakeMention.com. So I guess maybe if you could start from the beginning a little bit of like, so describe from start to end what you're utilizing here. Yeah, so, uh, oh, my figma shot. Oh, no, there's another one here. Um, so, look, what I started with was just showing, look, here's, here's how the SaaS company, you know, um, flows used to work, you know, to get someone set up. And, 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 you know, the potential of AI is literally to bring people into um, a custom-built meeting with a custom-built solution and a custom built presentation without ever having to meet them and talk to them. And, and, mm -hmm. and we do that, you know, it's, it, it's actually all the technology exists. It's just linking it together. So, so one of the funnels I was talking about was um, using a tool like mention, and there's a few of them. Um, I think, you know, uh, I looked at, uh, I think this one's one, oh, what's that called? Brand 24, uh, et cetera. And so what that does is it finds people and whichever channels you, you send it to talking about, the thing you the phrase you give it a phrase you can tell it you know what to exclude include you can refine it and so then um you've got that you can see there's a chat going on in linkedin or x and so then you can have a bot join the chat and the way to train the bot is just join 20 yourself yeah and then and then record that and then the bot and the bot already knows how to talk like me it's already got like half a million pages about thought leadership and stuff so it's gonna have a fairly intelligent chat with these guys and, and so then what we did is we looked at our software and thought, well, if we can already join those chats, what would we want to give them in the chat? Because we don't just want to send them to a website. We already know their business. We know they're running level 10 meetings. We, we know they're interested in this stuff. And I, I've done another one where we build a whole um, set of metrics for recruitment firms. 
and so who use a software called job adder and now we've built all those kpis once it's you know we can we can sell them multiple times so i look for people who are talking about that and then i can join their conversations and send them a link to meetings they will completely understand so have i got a recruitment one here somewhere yeah so yeah so this would be like someone from a recruitment company who's like maybe looking to to get better at you know because job adder doesn't have uh metrics in it so so we can offer that that they can't get through job adder um so you know if you're running a recruitment company and someone joins a conversation go oh yeah now we've got job adder metrics running and we use them to drive high performance and manage all our sales meetings we've got this great software everyone has to answer the questions before the meeting and it connects to the tasks they set their goals you're probably going to have a look yeah and then you're going to get there and go wow that's my business like literally that's what every recruitment company does and so you know compared to the old way of doing things it's like and so the way we redesigned our software was, okay, well, if, if we can bring the right person to the right meeting, let's remove all the barriers. So, so they can land right here without even signing up. They can edit the meeting. They can even run a meeting. And then if they want to save it, it'll connect it to the Google or Outlook calendar. It'll, you know, do the add-ins. It'll, we got them. Yeah. Um, and so, so we've kind of rebuilt our way of engaging with people so that instead of sending them to a website, you know, we get the AI just to, hey, here's your demo straight off the bat. So, and so I was just, Ben, so I just, we started uh, step four. yeah. <laughs> so, I just wanted to stop you for a sec because I think it, this is where it's not so clear. Meeting Zen is his product. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, I it's help. his SaaS product. So, people go into a meeting, it's like a demo of the product. And, and that's how, got it. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's got a whole lot of AI in it as well. So one of the things we'll do, so um, if you go into a one-on-one -on -one in meetings in, um, you can have a one-on-one -on -one with the AI, or if you're running a one-on-one, -on -one, you can have a, a an AI coach coach you. But the insight I had today is what I'll do here, because it'll always be a one-on-one, -on -one, is I'll add the AI to this, but I'll make it a sales AI. So it'll have all our sales, marketing, pricing, and 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 you know, and and then we'll have an onboarding AI. But but basically we've changed our whole thing from the website and all that just to one page where we're going to deliver everything through AI. And, and it's going to be a live version of, of, of the solution that they're looking for. And then, you know, the idea is to automate all of it. So you know, use mention, use a bot, send them a link, use an AI here, um, send them to HeyGen, you know, video about how to do it and why. And then, you know, we can continually deliver this HeyGen content each time they come and see us, come and talk to us, we can upgrade it. So, so for me now, it's like, I understand how all these different bits can fit together. And, you know, I've, I've, just, I've taken product to market for, 30 years, I've had massive sales teams, of, of, you know, and, and I think I can replace all of all of that now with a couple of good people helping me run these AIs, which is kind of scary, but kind of amazing too. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so how efficient it'll be compared to humans um, and, you know, whether it's appropriate for every business, it depends on the size of your market and, and the size of your sale. Yeah, so if I'm helping a New Zealand company who makes a $50,000 sale, I don't want to automate everything. There's just not enough um, people in their in their target market, you know, um, to to risk the lower conversion. But um, you know, with this software, it pretty well adds value to everyone who does recurring meetings. So if I convert one in a hundred instead of one in ten, I think I'm still going to be better off building an automated business. So so kind of the strategic side of it um, becomes important. But yeah, like I'm just amazed at how quickly these techs are evolving and how powerful they're going to be to restructure the way we go to market because you know joining yeah. a conversation is such a different animal to sending ads yeah yeah you've got a couple of questions andrea hi there um my question is i love all of these pieces you're using and katie i think you did a good job of describing the shorter and more customized flow for people coming in. Have you figured out how to automate all of these things or are you really having to go into each one of these and do the thing? 
Yeah, so so I, I've just that that's the next step. Yeah, and it's a great question. So I just got off a call prior to this for an hour with a guy uh, I've known for a long time, who's um, who's done that and um, looked at how he's done it, and, and and I may use his model, but but you know I've been thinking about it. Look, the keys, the CRM and the at the middle. I, I I have a dev background, so I could probably build it all, but I don't want to. I've, but I've got devs <laughs> who work for me. But um, no, I think the key is just to get the right CRM. Because the right CRM will have trigger mechanisms right. at each step, yeah. And so, um, if I could show you guys, um, so mapping out the flows. I don't know. Do you guys use Whimsical? Like it, it's it's a bit of work. I, I just took a whole lot of photos, if I could uh, find them, of like the way these flows get mapped out. It's pretty crazy, but um, you know, it also is um, going to be pretty friggin' amazing. Uh, Estefani cool. just mapped out a flow for us. I'm curious, um, Estefani, uh, what's your question for Ben? Thank you, Nicole. Um, hi, Ben. Um, I have a question. So do you think it's important to have all these tools in order to make the sale happen? Or could you start like just having the web mention and then you can go from there? Yeah, if you're in an existing business, it already has a whole lot of, um, you know, stuff going on. Actually, probably not mine to share, but that's the kind of idea of mapping out the triggers. So there's four or five different things you need to map out to, to connect it all up, yeah. Um, but the technology I just saw was doing everything I wanted and he'd pre-changed the AI bots that were connected to the CRM. So, you know, it was all connected together. So that was pretty cool. What I want to know is, can I connect my stuff? Um, going back to that other question, so it's that's really down to where your business is at and what its needs are, yeah? Because um, I'm starting from scratch. Like, I took this thing off the market to rebuild it. I'll probably rebrand it before I take it back to market because it's becoming an AI meeting center where three humans and three AIs can have, you know, their weekly meetings and we're teaching them how to have good conversations and things. Um, but, um, you know, so if... For example, I'm working with financial services companies. They want to talk to their clients and sell them. They don't want to automate the whole thing. Yeah. Book us a discovery meeting. That's where they want us to get it to for them. So um, so yeah, I've got uh, a client of mine who, who specializes in marketing for those guys. And so looking at the automations of that, and she's worked with Nicole a lot, you know, it's about giving them discovery calls. And so we're working out how we can guarantee a certain number of discovery calls for a certain price. And, and they're all happy to pay for it then. For other companies I've got, yeah, it's just about leads. So so I think that's sort of more company specific. And if I had an existing company, I'd just be doing one bit at a time, I think. Yeah. Dan, did you have a question? Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of figured this out on my own, but maybe just to confirm. So Ben, you've got um, the, the front end of this particular funnel is basically, basically social media listening devices and bots that go in and participate in chats. And then you're driving traffic, you know, into this funnel by doing that. But it strikes me that you can, um, you know, you can you can drive the leads in from any origination source, right? I mean, you you could because you know you got real time challenges with social media chats and things like that. So if I had, for instance, um, uh, something scraping the web for mentions like of your level ten meetings, for instance. Um, and I could identify who those participants were, I could go throw a line out to them in some different way and still drive them into the experience, right? And that's the whole thing of doing it through your CRM, yeah? Because because like I'm putting an end-to-end -end for a company that doesn't exist and, and I sort of made some decisions about, uh, and, and specific to my product, yeah? Um, like what we've learned about taking our product to market when people attend a meeting that they understand, they immediately get it. When they go into something that it's not relevant data and all that, yeah, they don't. So, so for that, we, we we think it's you know we we want to get to the specific people with the specific problem. But yeah, I mean, as soon as it's in your CRM, you can you can do all your traditional stuff as well. Um, I, I guess for me, maybe I'm a bit jaded. I don't like paid stuff anymore. Um, you know, I just. I, I think with paid, the problem I have is that, you know, it's always going to suck all the profit out of the system. You know, it's designed that way. Yeah. So if it's working, um, you know, your price is going to go up. So over time, I think paid paid's a challenge for business. Um, some businesses it works great, as we know, but but you know, generally, I think in, in a lot of companies, 
uh, over time that gets harder and harder to make it back. So I'm always looking for the, the smarter ways to market and, and the new ones. Cause I, I find when you can get something working first, you can usually gain market share, but absolutely Dan, there's, there's all the other things available to us. And there's probably 10 other AI ways of getting this information. I haven't thought of as well, to be honest. Um, yeah. But as an entrepreneur, what a new toolkit, man. Like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, Are you it's a using a CRM right now, Ben? Well, I, yeah, I've, I've used all of them, of course, over the years. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking again at, yeah. at what's going to serve my needs for this particular um, thing because of the way I want to do it. And I don't think it's a HubSpot or a Salesforce. I, I just think it's too hard for them to adapt their architecture. It's going to be something flexible and light that someone's customized and then someone goes and copies something like that. I don't know what's out there. Tell me, you know. Yeah. I wanted to share because go high level has the ability to do multiple bots in it. Um, yeah. We go through a vendor who has support because go high level is notoriously no support, but if you're setting up these systems for people, you can have a master account, provide the support and then have sub accounts and, um, and you can have multiple bots that you can hand tasks off to at different points in the process. And it it's all part of the workflow. So emails, bots, SMSs are now part of one workflow. Um, I can do a screen share. Did you have anything else you want to share? Do you want? No, no, look, as I say, um, Nicole asked me to jump on yesterday. I've just jumped back into AI after yeah. six weeks off. And um, I'm still catching up. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I This is change the world shit this year. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah, I love I love what you're doing at the beginning too. I think it's I we're definitely gonna have to integrate some of this into what we're doing. Um it's look, mention's quite expensive at the moment, but there'll be 10 competitors within a month that are cheaper, you know. Like oh why is this not? I don't know why this is not Oh, connection lost. This okay. is called high. Hmm. Yeah. I'm having technical yeah. issues. <laughs> Have you, uh, I'll, I'll send you the name of the one I looked at. I want I need to put it on here. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see, because we're, we're looking at, all of our processes too, and redesigning everything. You know, we were using an AI tool for marketing strategies. We're rethinking that completely. We're redesigning our tools. I don't know what's going on with the dashboard right now. It has nothing in it. Um, but we've been just rethinking everything. And that end-to-end -end sales process is something. I like your new way of prospecting. I feel like we could work that into what we're doing. So we have this bot that we're using. You can see it in the upper right-hand side, the little icon for the bot. Can everybody see this okay? Yeah. Now, okay. The other thing with those bots too, Nicole, they can initiate LinkedIn conversations and Twitter conversations. Yeah. I, to start. I love that. And so with the bots that are attached to this, you can have different types that do different things in your workflow. So I'll show the workflows in a minute, but we just import information. So like it shows up here, you can scrape a URL and then it takes all of the unstructured data. It structures it into Q and A in this case, because it's a bot for our website that's meant to answer questions and gather email addresses. You can put guidelines on the bot to have it do whatever you want it to. In this case, it's just our like customer service kind of bot on the website. Um, one of our clients, he has a booking bot. He booked an extra $50,000 as soon as they set it up. Yeah. And they do a uh, home repair. You know, just there's sp some specific jobs. I won't say because I don't know if he I can tell you what his business is yet, um, but they've been around for a really long time and they are part of a franchise and the franchise doesn't use this system, but he got it just for the booking bot. He booked $50,000 as soon as they set it up. Yeah. I mean, I, I was just talking to this other guy and I think he's used the same tech to build it on. Um, and, and what was interesting is he said, like he's got a company paying him four grand a month. He's built this full end to end that goes right through to getting paid, doing the job, 
quoting the job. It's insane, yeah? Like, it's SMS, email, bot, um, writing. It's it, it's like, uh, so the technology you've got here, yeah, this is the best one I've seen. So, of course, you're onto it. Um, but, you know, his big customer who's using it, all they've used so far is the booking bot. And yeah. They're just so happy. It's just like blown up for them. They're booking tons of work. So, so people using those first are winning. Like it's that simple. Yeah. Like anyone who starts, and, and this is the opportunity now. You know, go fast. Yep. So I mean, in, in a year they won't work because everyone uses them, and you've got to do that. <laughs> or it'll just be the new way that we do it, right? So it's not going to be an advantage over somebody else, but right now it is. For this yeah. moment, it is an advantage. And, um, and, and a decade, we'll just think about it and it'll get booked. The new <laughs> it's going to keep moving. Yeah, I'll think about it. My car will drive me wherever I want to go. Um, So this is, the bot comes with a flow set up and then, um, well, sort of. <laughs> the person has to set it up. We pay a person to set it up. So then the flow is here and it shows like if, if this, then that, this is weird. This workflow is tiny. The normal workflow is like a very big one. I want to think that must have been a test. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay. So even if you're not technical, you can set up a bot. It's, you just define what you want it to do, like you were doing in those workflows and you have different triggers. So for us, we have triggers that start with live chat. Somebody messages us on Facebook. Somebody replied on Google My Business, Instagram, SMS. They can come in through any of our channels. And it's for right now, it's the same bot that answers them no matter what channel they come in on, even texting us. Mm -hmm. And so they can get an answer here. Um, and then we have response channels and then we can have them go wherever we want to. Um, but this is, this is what it looks like. We can start an email sequence. We could put an email in here. We could put an SMS sequence in here. Um, we can put any sort of nurture sequences we want. Like if this, then that actions, we can have a discovery bot that might take over at a certain point. This is what we're looking at is how many assistants or different bots we want and what we want them to do. Do we want someone who's ready for that more expensive conversion, Ben, like you were talking about, a higher end sale? Well, maybe we do a discovery and we've been working on this, the information to train the discovery bot so that it asks questions like I do. And it's like, it's pretty good. Um, and the other thing I've done in the past, and, and I know AIs probably can do this now just as well as a human as well, but um, for companies who are doing a big ticket sale, say 50 grand, like um, they help scale a sales coaching company once, um, you know, we were generating all this leads, but like one in 20 was booking an appointment. Yeah. But there were quality leads. Like in that case, I just get someone to pick up the phone. Like, you yeah, know, call these 20 people each day. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because the only one of them booked and we'll book another four or five there. Um, I've seen now bots making phone calls as well as humans. So you know, you'll be able to add a trigger to that flow and, and have a bot follow people up as well, yeah? Um, to yeah. Get to, uh, yeah, you can. Them. Yeah. And yeah. in here, it shows the opportunities. I don't know why it doesn't show the first part of the conversation, but no matter where they come in, the conversation thread is kept here. And so they can, it's like, and you can type in responses in this. This is go high level. So you can type an SMS response or an email response manually also. So there's some point where it needs to get turned over to a human and then a human can take over and just send a message in there. But we can see where it came from, what the questions and answers were, like what, how far the bot got it before it needed a human. So we knew we ha also, one of the things we wanted to know from the bot is how this person heard about us. So that was something we put in there. And um, like this lead came from Jasper because we're a Jasper partner. This guy saw us on their website. He contacted us and he wants help setting up his account and training his VAs. And that came in like, and he had a conversation with our chat bot, you know, it was, and Andrea and I had a little follow-up with him that was quick 
but we already knew what he wanted and the record is in here. And this is why we really like go high level too, is that um, there's so many developers doing, building different things like these bots. There's a number of different bots that plug into go high level, um, but then it becomes part of your workflow. And they, like Ben, you were saying, they're really flexible and open. Yeah. And so if you want to build really something, like yeah, if you want to build something custom, you can. Dan, what, go ahead. Have you guys gotten um, any feedback from your prospects along the way about their interactions with the chat bots and things like that? Like when you, for instance, and Andrea, I think you said, you know, talked to that prospect that came to you through Jasper. Do, do you get any sense as to whether they're aware that they're talking to AI and if they are, whether that's a good or a bad thing for them? Well, I, we are transparent about our use of AI. We have a policy. We talk about it all the time. We're doing all these things, but nobody has, I mean, there have been, when we first started training it, there definitely was some things that were like, what is happening, you know? And someone was asking a question thinking it was like Nicole or, you know, whatever it was, but um, no, like they don't even mention it. It's just part of the process. Yeah. It's, because of where it is now. When it started, it was not that story, but you know, <laughs> now yeah. it's better. And go ahead, Katie. I, I think it also depends on the type of business you have and what they're contacting you for. Uh, if you have a customer service bot and you've got a bunch of angry customers coming to you about some sort of problem, that's probably not going to fly very well. And there's companies that do that, big companies that are using AI bots like Verizon and the cell phone companies are a perfect example of how not to do it because you can tell immediately that it's a bot. You get frustrated as a customer and you just want to talk to a human at that point. So it, it totally depends on use case, I think, and how it's integrated into your website. Um, and like Andrea said, we're totally transparent. Like sometimes we even say, go talk to our AI bot before you talk to us. So yeah. So my so my audience, Nicole knows this, and a couple of the rest of you have been on this with me before know this. I so I market a unique financing product to law firms. So I'm typically talking to lawyers or law firm administrators or paralegals, maybe. And so I guess the use case I'm thinking of for this is um almost like an appointment setter function where we give them good basic information to qualify them and to educate them about um, you know, what it is that we do and then get them to the point where we set an appointment and then have a human um, close the deal. Because, you know, you talk about high value, each one of these relationships um, on average is worth um, a, about $300,000 lifetime value to me. So. Yeah, you can do as much of that process within the bot as you need to. So you can just like when Nicole and Ben both were showing the workflows, it's like um, qualifying question number one. If the answer yes, take them this way. If the answer no, go this way. And you can do this whole all you need. All you need is the workflow mapped out, which sounds easy, but right. That's really the most complicated part, not building it because you can find someone to build it. It's thinking about how you how you qualify the people what are those questions what happens if it's yes what happens if it's no like how do you tag them where do they go do you follow up do you add them to a call do you what is it and that's that's the magic is the actual flow and then the training the bot to do exactly that because the bot needs clarity that's all it needs and if you give it directions it will follow them whether they're good directions or bad directions, right? So we want to give them as clear of directions as we can. But like me, hallucinate sometimes, but generally it's pretty good. How I used to do this back in the day, Dan, when it was just chatbots and we were building those out as marketing things, is I'd always tell people it was. So I go, hey, here's the Ben bot, you know. <laughs> Uh, Ben's not available right now. I'm, I, I can probably help you out. I'm a bit dumb at times. Um, you know, if I can't, I'll, I'll get hold of him. And, and people were cool with that. Um, with the Hey Gen stuff I'm doing, like I haven't even done the upgrades and the voice enhancements, but anyone who doesn't know me doesn't know my voice, the timber, yeah, because it sounds a bit more Australian than Kiwi, but most people can't tell. So, um, so they all think it's me, like 90% 
won't believe me it's ai and and so will i won't i tell them i haven't decided yet um it's interesting huh? um the bot because because i want to plug hey jen into a bot so you can converse with me yeah like with my video yeah that would be really awesome because the hey jen stuff we don't we've done a lot with that is really cool like there's a video of me speaking fluent french and i know no french and it totally looks like me i sent it to my family and friends and they were just like whoa you know and <laughs> and mackenzie did a really great one in one of our classes in level one i remember and it looked like her it sounded like her it, it's just really um a great tool but of course and and we always talk about this. It's like that responsibility and ethical use of AI. So if you're giving generic business information and giving people info in that way, I think it's fine. Depends on your business, right? Depends on your product. Are you giving medical advice? You probably don't wanna do that with HeyGen or AI, but you know, you have to, it's, you have, to have that discernment in your products, your services. Liability, I mean. Yeah. And pay attention to what regulations are already in existence in the EU. Um, we have a blog post up about that because we operate on the standards that are in the EU that they've implemented. And those are kind of the highest standards in the world right now. And we want to abide by that because then we're not going to violate anything if we cross borders, which we do all the time, you know, like I do workshops in Germany and other places over there. And so we want to make sure we're compliant. And also those are the laws that are most likely going to come down in your countries too. You know, we're, there will be guidelines. And as long as you have abided by these guidelines, you're not going to get fined for anything that you didn't know that you shouldn't be doing. So Ben, I don't know what, I don't know specifically what the disclosure requirements would be for you but i'd look up that eu stuff to see because a lot of people are adding well not a lot some people <laughs> are adding ai to their privacy policy on their website they're adding an ai policy i mean yeah i've always been more forgiveness than permission but i don't have a lot to lose right now but um, yeah i hear you i mean EU's, you, you know they're messing a lot of stuff up for their citizens right now in terms of access to stuff like the truth so um yeah yeah i, I think um you know but the, the, there's still a little bit of free free market in the world i don't know how long it'll last but yeah i agree you gotta you gotta do it right i think it's um yeah like I, i'm really interested to chat i'd like to plug the the hey Gen type tech into a gpt yeah i've got a gpt trained with like a half a million pages of my thought leadership and everything i've ever written and all the kpi expertise we developed at results.com and all that and if you could go have a chat with that and you're chatting with me like that would be pretty amazing because mm -hmm. we're using it as a coach um like in our software to coach people and it's friggin better than most of the coaches i've employed it's already very very good yeah yeah, so, it, yeah. one of my friends put scaling up into like put the book into a chat so you can ask it any questions and it's all the scaling up information um I mean, there, there's so much that's possible and if you think about like how is that going to be lead gen for you and how can you automate it and how can you tie it back into your crm system you know like if people are asking certain questions well they probably need this certain solution and you could serve it up for them yeah it's um <laughs> I'm so excited. It's been such a fun year testing this stuff. I, I'm um, I'm an analytics guy. You know, that's how I build everything, test, measure, AB, all that. So you know, this is just so my jam. Um, and it's a bit messy because they're not all interconnected yet. But, you know, the difference yeah. with AI and everything that's been previous. And my last company got acquired by um, a generative AI company like 2016. And, um, you know, even then we could see where this was going to go. And, um you know, it's such a game change in so many ways to just how to think about taking things to market because all the processes that weren't scalable have become scalable, yeah? Like I can yeah. do that customized video with a personalized message to someone multiple thousands of times a day. Like, that's bizarre. Um, yeah. It's amazing because it just gets you like 10 steps ahead because the person receiving the message 
thinks that you've taken the time and that's okay to have them perceive that because you want them to feel good. And guess what? You did take the time because you created the automation, but um, you've created this video has your face, you're talking, you say something specifically about them. It's not just generic. They're already, you're, you're going to have their ear right away because of, you've of done it. You differently. guys have a much better opportunity because you can go, Oh, by the way, glad you got to the meeting. It's really nice to meet you for the first time. Uh, that was my AI. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what we could do for you and so you can really play with that yeah um yeah so uh, i like to think i don't know if everybody has seen the mark zuckerberg lex friedman uh podcast in the meta universe but i like to think that's kind of where it's all headed um you know you, hopefully we won't have to wear those huge goggles and everything but <laughs> Okay. But like you'll talk to somebody who's a hologram or you know whatever sitting on your desk and that's you know instead of the hey Jen bot GPT whatever it's going to be like a likeness of you in hologram form that you're conversing with somebody and and hopefully your personality and authenticity comes through enough that people want to connect with that. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. if it's me talking in, you know, a script I've written or a, a, my GPT's written, which is like me now because I've taught it how to write like me, um, it is me. Like, they won't get there and go, oh, this guy's totally different. Yeah. yeah. That's what we're, I mean, we started with that with images where it doesn't look exactly like me, but they won't be surprised to see me when I show up. You know, <laughs> it's going to be close enough. Um. Robert, I was wondering if you had any specific questions about go high level that you, or things that you wanted to see or things that you've been exploring. So I know you've been in this AI conversation for a while too. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I was pretty blown away with uh, like, it was a mini demo. I think I showed you that there was this company there. This EO member said, man, my pet grooming company is blowing up. Like I hired this, this company for $300 a month and uh, they put a, a, a chat bot on my website and it's just booking me out like all day long and it's responding. And so I go to the website and, and I'm like, first off, uh, and I, I did go, I think I went to your AI smart marketing thing and I started asking questions about Jasper to play with it. Well, what I thought was really unique about the way they set it up and go high level was the first question is like, what's your phone number to chat? So it's like a lot of these bots, like you're gone. Like you start talking, then you're gone. You go to sleep, turn it off. You get busy, distracted. Asking for your phone number to start the chat, I thought was like, uh-huh. Like that's the way you do it. Uh, and then if you start the chat, it's like, yeah. And all its job in, in life for this AI bot is to book your appointment for the groomer and i'm like okay uh like this is this is why he's finding it so effective and it's following up and it's like it's doing all these follow-ups and then the other thing that i saw was cool is like you put your phone number on there you call the number it just directs to your normal phone line but if they miss it that auto text comes to you i'm like hey uh sorry mr call uh what mm -hmm. did you need help with and of course they're like oh i needed a book with my dog appointment oh i can help you with that and it's just booking a calendar so, uh, but I didn't really set up the demo with them because then I think they like threw me a high level um, affiliate. That's how like I kind of saw their affiliate. I was like, oh, you know, I think after I booked an appointment with them, they just threw a, a, an affiliate at me, which probably worked because I, I ended up buying it. Like, uh, well, I started getting like this high level things like two to three weeks of like setting up all this bullshit. So I'm like on two weeks two week timeline i'm like still setting up shit um but it's all it's it's not hard it's just like tedious yeah and um and i and and from what it looks like this conversation ai is there is the go to for this thing to uh if you want it just to book out a calendar it seems like that's the one to use cuz it's like already has a has a integration with all their calendars you choose the calendar um, so I'm just curious, are you using, uh, you must be using one of those other AI bots that, that, that are in there and not that one. Um, Andrea, do you remember the name of the one we're using? The one we're using right now is just the native one inside. Oh. 
It's it's a, it's actually a plugin we pay for because I know oh. I pay for it. Um, I can't um, remember what it's called. It it's was the called... very first one that came out. Um, and we found it from the Go High Level group, you know, at the Facebook group. We found it in there. And um, we have someone who's an admin on our account and he, he helps set everything up. And that's what we pay for. So we go through a white labeled person because then we get the service and he has VAs that know how to do the things. Um, and so we just paid to have it set up and then we're training it and tweaking it to do the things because it was a booking bot to start with, but we don't book appointments like that. Um, we want to answer questions and we'll send them information, but the, it's first initiative was to be a booking bot. Uh, but you can change you can change the parameters and train it to do whatever you want it to do. Yeah. So, so what I'm thinking, um, cause I bring out products, uh, and I have my own booking calendar on my website. Um, I'm thinking if there's a way to, uh, to, uh, API create, cause it, as a person who, uh, who, if you, if you buy your own account or whatever, and, and, and instead of being a, a, a sub account or your, your own agency account, it looks like you can create multiple, like a hundred calendars. I don't, I haven't seen the limit on the yeah. calendars. So if I can, if I have 800 products, maybe I can create 800 calendars, sync my API to each of these, these products, and then maybe let it go ham. Uh, so my website can continue doing its thing. Now, I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to play around with it uh, enough <laughs> and, and, and figure out. Uh, and then I saw you, as a agency account, you can create multiple accounts. So I can create an account for every single one of my agents that are 12 agents. Yeah. I can like make them create a LinkedIn account and then I can have them be bots. Uh, I mean, I, you know, if someone messages me, I'm like started doing things. So it just seemed like a, a pretty good deal for, you know, I pay Calendly, I pay later.com. I pay like 20 different people for this thing where they're offering like 12 products. It was like, it seems too good to be true. I'm waiting for the catch. Um, but it's probably that I have to like spend another another week and a half of of getting all the stuff finished that I have to do to set it up. <laughs> yeah. Ben, did you have a comment? You looked like you were going to say something. Oh, uh, look, I, I I was just looking at it. One thing I would say, just looking at the pricing, it'll change. Like I've been around this space for a long time. The CRM pricing model starts like gets you all in there. Once they've got enough people, they start charging for API calls for the number of stuff you've got on there. There's a pretty well structured pricing model. So uh, right now it's ridiculously reasonably priced to do that, but there's a stupid amount of work to set it up. Like I, I just... Um, you know, look at what Nicole's built there. And, and that's not my core business. Yeah. Um, I've got a software I build and I want to sell it. If someone's already built that stuff for me. I'm going to use what they've built. Like my core business is not that. So, so for me, like maybe I'd build it all myself one day, but for, for, for this stage of, of my business, I like who, if someone's already built it, then, then I don't need to, I got a lot of other things to do. Yeah. Um, that's what um, we pay for, Ben. We don't build it. <laughs> we have somebody who does it. And yeah, I see there are unlimited everythings and and um, and whatnot, and how I could have all their sub accounts. I can see that being great for agencies, um, like with Nicole. And, and the great thing for me as a client is I don't have to build it because she can build it all and just give me an account of it. Like that, that's a win-win. Exactly. Think. Yeah. So we're we're actually working on a AI smart CRM that's going to be based on Go High Level and have these built out inside. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just saw another one and. Um, and they had the prompts inside, had everything in there, connect, place your Facebook. I'm like, you can just keep growing this bloody thing, eh? It, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the opposite of the Apple ecosystem, yeah? It's not a walled garden. It's fully open. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love that. Yeah, we, I mean, we've been using Go High Level for, I don't know how many, it's been two, at least two years, maybe three maybe three years now. Um, and they just keep adding more features to it too. It's the most robust CRM system that's so cheap and really open to development. And so there's all there's a really big community online and there's a lot of people that know how to do it. You can hire help from the Philippines to help you implement too. Um, 
And so we we're going to start with someone probably Monday, right, Andrea, who's going to start building out our stuff. Like we've had an external person, but we're actually hiring an internal person just to build out all these flows. Um, cool. I'll um, have a chat to the, the the guys I just looked at. They built um, some industry specific flows, mm -hmm. but they've taken them to the, the nth degree, like ridiculous flows. Yeah. So um, maybe we can get them to flick a few your way to. That would be cool. Hey, Lisa, Lisa, I see you unmuted. Did you have a comment? Yeah, about I have a question. Um, so Ben, you um L10 and running your L10 meeting, is that what your software does or your oh, AI? Yeah, yeah so so our, our our software runs any recurring meeting and yeah, it's basically designed to build a culture of high performing uh people no matter where they're located. Um, but what we've identified is that. Uh, the easiest way for someone to want to buy our software is for them to see uh, a meeting that they understand, yeah, that they are already running in our software. They turn up there, they see the bloody dashboards with the metrics they recognize from their industry. We have these powerful questions. We've had psychologists help us develop that, you know, each team member answers before the meeting. It's connected to all the task apps and things. And so, you know, for us to sell it, is like we need to work out exactly who they are and what sort of meeting they want to see. So, so what I was using um, mention for was go, okay, well, I can make a really amazing level 10 meeting demo. Yeah. And there's a whole lot of people running level 10s. So, um, you know, how do I find them? And how do I find the guys who are like talking about improving them? And so joining those chats to me and then sharing, oh, here's how we did it, you know, with a bot that pretending to be me, I think is going to be more powerful than any other marketing. Uh, approach we've made in terms of um, the quality of the people we're talking to and their readiness to to do something. So so that's kind of how I'm doing it. Yeah. So that the technology is mine, but you know the marketing that we're building would apply to any. Sort yeah. Of SaaS. Well, we we run L we run on EOS, and I use the ninety app, and it sucks. Yeah. So well, I'd love to see what you have. Yeah, I'd love to show you. And the way we do that, Lisa, is like people already have a whole lot. So. I, I did this sort of thing once before with results.com. And one of the things I learned is because we did everything. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of resistance from people to change from software. They like, like everyone's got an outlook or Google calendar. We don't use a calendar. We just sync with those. Everyone's got task apps. We sync with those, but if they've already got a whole lot of stuff set up in something like 90, um, like is, uh, if I share my screen now, um, we do it this way. I hope you don't mind this. Uh, me doing this, uh, Showing us how we're doing it, um, Nicole. <laughs> Sorry, <Yeah. laughs> wasn't here to sell my stuff, but but she did ask. I'll just quickly share um, that just so you can understand how it works. So, um, so you could still keep all your ninety info here, yeah. So this is um, Jira running inside our software, so you can run any bit of software, documents, data inside this frame here, and then you have sort of the conversation and the tasks and everything alongside it, and you have an AI. Um, as well that basically will coach you and, and or you can have a one-on-one -on -one with the AI to talk about your metrics and your dashboards so so that's kind of how we do it so so anything you've got you can keep using we just wrap the the stuff that drives the the performance culture around it that's kind well, of thing. I, I I'm leaning in and just saying you know in our business we use Trello Asana like yeah. all these different products and we use 90 and, you know, you're sitting here and to talk to Nicole, what you said about how it's just, there are these CRMs that are incredibly inexpensive and we're just waiting until all the rack up comes of all the add-ons. I just feel like, you know, we're in all of these different, you know, we're adding on all these different platforms and reality is, is do we need them all? You know, like with 90, it stinks. It is a terrible program. Sorry if the 90 owner is here. I tell them all the time, as Nicole, I know you know. <laughs> hey, look, they, 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 look, at the time they put it out, like we went out and, you know, they 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 helped the market. Like a lot of people used it to move it forward and it alliterate, they'll either improve it or, you know, we'll come out and take a hold of it. I'll, I'll be targeting their people for sure, but also you don't have to chuck away anything that's there because it's got all notes and all that. That's not my jam. I just want to make your meetings work better and your people perform better. So So that's kind of my thinking and, and that's what I've done all my life and well it's yeah, interesting I'm yeah doing. yeah thank you no worries um you, know, you should be able to find me if you want to have a look closer 
Uh, we're in a closed beta at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's it's, it's pretty ready to go. Thanks, Ben. I'll reach out. Cool. What industry are you on your Lisa? Sorry. I sell flowers on the internet for do-it-yourself weddings. Yeah. Cool. Sorry, I shouldn't swear. <laughs> so I a like lot of flowers. Things. Go to 50flowers.com and check out her site. It She has the most gorgeous flowers. Yeah, but it's overwhelming too because <laughs> there's get, so many. Like I'm listening to all this chatbot going, yeah, we use gorgeous and we definitely have an AI chatbot, but I just got to get Jasper up and running. <laughs> yes. Yeah, till the next one comes along. Yeah. Um, okay, well, this has been a great session. Thank you. Dion, did you have any specific questions or anything you were hoping to get out of this? Um, not a heap. Our business does a lot of work with government. It's like 100% all government. Got it. So I'm really just trying to figure out what pieces are safe to put in government, particularly in Australia where there's a lot of restrictions on foreign firms just like Europe and things like that. So for me, it's just understanding what's happening in the private world and what is potentially down the track with the government stuff that can be pieced together. Um, it just can't easily be chucked in. From a government perspective so yeah we've we've actually worked with government too um and so if you want to have a conversation about that afterwards um i've got a forum mate who does cybersecurity and does training in the government in the states um i yeah let me know if you want to talk about it because there are some certain use cases depending on the agencies because we we actually have a bid in with a for a big u.s government project too yeah, yeah. I suppose we're not dealing with the smart part of government. We're dealing with the dumb part of government. So the part that you're talking to is like government, which is charged probably thinking of that. I'm thinking about that real dumb part of government, which is, you know, yeah, just... I think the way to target those guys, Dion, is, is not as a government, but hit their individual LinkedIn's and Facebook's and that type of thing. Uh, and even engage a bit lower down the channel and go up if you can. Um, because then the rules are generic in social media. Yeah, the government doesn't have their own special rules there. Um, I've done this with other organizations with like non-solicitation policies, but, you know, then just go through social media. So, yeah, that's kind of a uh, top of the funnel way uh, I've found can work. Well, I yeah, think definitely. I'm curious what the dumb part of government is because we, we've worked it's all of it. in education <laughs> like in the education sector, the people in the government. And then we're also talking to military, but not not the cybersecurity suppose, kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose it's like the people within government, within each government department, there tends to be leaders or thought leaders that are thinking about this AI transition. And there's 95% of the rest of the department that are still on like Internet Explorer from like 2010, 2009, um, and so it's it's navigating all those parts in there. Um, you know, it's you know if you look at just the transitions with government, you know, while the private sector is on using Facebook and and Twitter for their businesses, government is five years behind before they have the or have the the bravery to jump into using different types of tools. And we do a lot of work with government, but we spent like three or four months just testing to see if HubSpot even talk to our customers so it's just about trying to see what tools and see how softly if they can work and then if we recommend them to government then we have to understand you know if it can if it can actually work or there's just so many blockers particularly around data sovereignty and data security that just stop everything all the time like it took years for a sales for salesforce to get adopted in australia until salesforce actually put a data center in australia yeah, so, Microsoft did the same, eh? Yeah, so Microsoft Salesforce, that like that all happened, you know, probably around the time of the Iraq Afghanistan wars, but you know, it took a long time for that to all happen and get approved and get used. So yeah. yeah. In Canada, uh so I live in Canada, I'm American and do projects all over the world. And in Canada, people want their data centers to be located in Canada too, because of privacy. And the rules are a lot different than they are in the U.S. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. 
yeah. we'll go to the Cayman Islands eventually. <laughs> Face ourselves there. <laughs> I'll yeah, see. I mean, it, okay, even, <laughs> yeah, even with like Copilot, the way Microsoft's been talking to customers in Australia, it's been very cagey about like they're trying to steer the conversation around where data is actually truly stored and handled. And that's, yeah, it's just. The good thing is I have time to watch the private sector and then figure out how then they land into the government over a period of years. You don't have to rush. So. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to get, hard to lose, eh? Yep. Hard to get, hard to lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Um, let us know. Let me know if you want to have a chat too later um, about any of that because we – like the policies and stuff that we're looking at, we want to make sure that we can be secure enough to use, uh, like we're talking to insurance companies who do cyber security insurance and they have lawyers on their boards that are making sure that everything is okay. It's like, if we can pass through them, we can pass through the government in Abu Dhabi and Germany, like Eastern Germany, small ones too. Um, we want to make sure that like for the tools that we use, the methods we recommend that we know that sort of information, privacy, security, where the, where the data lives. Um, yeah. So welcome to the conversation here and you're welcome to come back to, um, you. yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll have you back Ben to show us what you're doing with meetings and when you're, or whatever you're going to call it now. Yeah, I'm I'm targeting sort of yeah I don't know I, I I got some decisions to make whether I frame it up as an execution versus meeting versus you know and then yeah get it branded and give it a facelift but but the function's all pretty close so I'm targeting kind of a proper guerrilla marketing launch at GLC in April I'm gonna go <laughs> I'm gonna a lot of EO board meetings and EO forum meeting templates out yeah <laughs> it's, um, I want to be ready to go for that. Um, um i'm just going to do this before i close up on youtube um join the mastermind aismartmarketing.com backslash mastermind if you want to get in on the rest of the conversation we're going to go off of live because i've got some more confidential information to talk to you about can i join that too Okay, and I'm going to stop record. Hey, thanks for having me along. Really enjoyed it.